Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hopefully, everybody had an enjoyable Wednesday afternoon. Anybody have anything spectacular you'd like to share? Uh, uh, not really. I mean, it started at AU camp and stuff like that. Okay, all right, that's good news, EJ. All right, so yesterday, guys, we started our discussion on pricing, right? Yes, sir. All right, so before we continue that discussion, uh, it, can anybody tell me what the four P's of marketing are again? I know um, what I'm Four P's of marketing. Uh, uh, Kawan. Uh, price. Price, okay. So that's what we're talking about now. Colin? Promotion. Promotion, good. Jane? Product. Product, good. Zane, last one. Place. Place, okay. So we've already talked about product, okay. So again, the product is what we make, what we sell, that's our good or our service. We've talked about promotion, that's our advertising, that's how we get the message out to our consumer. And now we're talking about price, how we price it, okay? So yesterday we also did a little bell ringer. You guys came in and you wrote down three things that you purchased this week. Somebody tell me something that they purchased this week. Anybody? Pop, what we get? Um, my phone bill. So you paid for your phone bill. Yeah. Can he, would you mind sharing with the class how expensive that phone bill was? How much was it? I know $43. $43, right? How many of you guys have jobs? All right. So $43 is not that cheap either, right? Yeah. Why do you think your phone bill is $43? Because because my, credit. Credit. my data. Credit. Data. Oh. Anybody else have any ideas on why that phone bill is $43? Yes. The type of phone it is. Type of phone it is, anything else? Contract. Contract, anything else? Company. The company that you're with. So the point is, we've already seen that there's at least four different factors that could have contributed to how expensive that phone bill was. Does anybody else pay their phone bill in here? Well, I pay my phone bill, okay? And it's me and my wife and my phone bill. My phone bill is more than $43 a month, okay? But a lot has to do with the fact that I've purchased additional insurances, I'm with Verizon, which is probably one of the most expensive phone companies I can be with. I still have no idea why I'm still with them, but that's what I'm paying right now, okay? All right, what else What else have we bought? Gatorade. Gatorade, all right. How much does that Gatorade cost, Dillion? Two dollars How much? Two for four. Two for four dollars, what was it say? It's Speedway, two for four dollars. How much do you think it costs to make that Gatorade, Tillion? Thirteen cents. 13 cents. We're just throwing out numbers now, right? Yeah. Anything else? I think it's like, it's like about Nike. First of all, who makes Gatorade? Anybody know? What company? Nike. You say Nike? No. <laughs> <laughs> you say that's not right. Who makes Gatorade? Anybody know? What company? It's Pepsi. So Pepsi makes Gatorade. All right. How much does the Pepsi cost? Yeah, I was going to say the Okay. So why is a Pepsi less expensive than a Gatorade? Because like, we got more people in the world that do like sports. Okay, so that's one theory. Hold on a second. Tillian said that he thinks that there are more people in the world that may drink what now? Gatorade. Do you think there are more people that drink Gatorade than Pepsi? No. Yeah, no. Absolutely not. Okay, but that's a good try. What could be another reason why Gatorade would be more expensive? Yes, sir. So again, Gatorade is more expensive. Okay. All right. So it may cost more to make Gatorade than Pepsi, right? What else? There's a bigger selection of sodas than there's sports drinks. Right. So there's a bigger selection of sodas as well. Okay. So when you have a hundred different options of one thing versus one option of another thing, that could affect the way that it's priced. Okay. All right. So we're going to go in and we're going to finish our discussion with our PowerPoint today. And again, we've already gone through the four P's. We talked about promotion, place. And now we're going to talk about pro, uh, pricing, okay? So what do you guys think the main goal of a company is as far as pricing is concerned? Make, what do you want to do? Make profit. Make money, right? Why am I in business unless I want to make money? So profit maximization is going to be the number one priority of the businesses uh, that you guys deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and the purchases that you make. That's the reason they price the things the way they do, okay? Um, I, I watched a, a funny episode, and, and uh, i actually show you guys this on tomorrow, but uh, I was watching the Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live episode. Anybody watch Shark Tank? Yeah. Okay, yeah. what do they do on Shark Tank? They uh, have businesses, and they go there see if they're going to make some money. Right, they have businesses, they go up, they see if people want to invest in their business, right? Yeah. So this particular business, on Saturday Night Live, they ask them, well, how much does it cost you to make the item? 
He said forty dollars, and then they say, "Well, how much are you selling it for?" He said thirty nine ninety nine. Does that make sense? No. Why not? You're not making any money. How many of you guys, if you start a business, would be in business to break even? Anybody? You know what break even means? That means make no profit, make no money. All right? So profit maximization is something that you guys are going to have to take into consideration. Next thing, increase market share. That means that you want to take the market share away from the competition. All right? This particular diagram right here shows market share for shoes. How many of you guys like the shoe industry? What's your favorite shoe, Tiliana? Jordan. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan? Yeah. EJ, Jordan? Yeah. Anybody Jordan else, Jordan? Jordan. Yeah. All right. What shoe company do you think has the largest market share? If I don't Nike. Nike, right? Which shoe company came out first, Nike or Adidas? Adidas. Adidas, OK? Well, can anybody tell me who Nike's first major sponsor or major celebrity yeah, endorser Michael, was? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Okay, do you guys know that Michael Jordan actually wanted to be endorsed by Adidas? Not Nike. Okay? All right, we're going to learn more about this on tomorrow because on a, tomorrow I'm going to show you guys a documentary called Nike Swoosh, and we're going to really look into the Nike empire on how they started from track shoes to becoming a multi billion dollar company. So we'll take a look at that on tomorrow. But let's just focus on market share right now. You want to either increase your market share or maintain your market share, okay? So that means that you want to, if I'm Nike, I not only want people to buy more Nike shoes, but I want them to buy Nike instead of another shoe. Does that make sense? Okay, this is one way to increase market share, okay? Next, let's look at headphones. What's your favorite headphone? Apple, Apple headphones. Apple phone, uh, Apple, what are they called? Ear, AirPods? AirPods. AirPods, okay. AirPods, what else? Beats. Beats. Who wears Beats? Uh, okay. Which company do you think has the largest market share in headphones? Beats. It's actually incorrect. And this is actually looking at the global market, okay? So globally, there's a German company called Sennheiser who actually has a larger market share than Beats. But guess who's number two? Beats is right behind them, okay? Here's some factors that affect prices. Anybody ever watch The Price is Right? Well, this is a show that I used to have to watch growing up. My parents used to make me watch it. But on the show, The Price is Right, uh, contestants got to go up and play different games and actually guess how much an item cost, okay? What are some things that we talked about earlier that can be factored into the cost of an item? We said supply and demand. Anybody can, can anybody tell me what supply and demand means? What does it sound like? What does supply mean? The amount of something you have. Okay, so the amount of something available, right? What about demand? Demand, when you demand something, you what? Want it. You want it, right? So how bad something is desired helps to determine the cost, right? So how many, you guys say you like Jordans, right? Yeah. All right, y'all buy the retro Jordans? Yes, sir. All right, you ever heard of dead stock? You know what that means? Yeah. What does that mean? That they have right? That means that they're, they're not going to make another one, right? What does this affect with the cost of that shoe? Anybody, anybody ever um, wore Team Jordan shoes? Okay. Are Team Jordan shoes more expensive or less expensive than Retro Jordan shoes? They're less expensive, right? All right. How much is a Retro Jordan shoe? Anybody know? In between $190 and $220, right? What about uh, a Jordan that just came out last year? How much was that? About 120, 120 to 170. Why is the old Jordan more expensive than the new Jordan? Because everybody has more batteries. Huh? Because they probably won't make more. Too. They're gonna make more of the new Jordan. It's less desired. The reason the same Jordans that you guys are designing right now to pay in $220 for, those same shoes when they came out the first time were $100 cheap. Do you think they're using new material to make them? No. It's the same material. You think they're doing anything different at all? No. No. So how can they sell a shoe to you, the same shoe to you, 10 years later, and charge you $100 more? Because you'll pay for it. Because you'll pay for it. Thank you, Colin. Right? So again, that comes with supply and demand. Other things to take into consideration, economic conditions. Do people make the same amount of money now that they made 10, 15, 20 years ago? No. Do they make more or less? 
More money, okay? Does gas cost more now? Yes. Does milk cost more now? Yes. Okay? So economic conditions change as well, which affect price. Competition. Is Jordan the only shoe out? No. What other shoes are popular right now? Kyrie's. What else? LeBron James, right? What else? KD. KD's. What else? PG. PG's. What else? Curry's. Curry's, right? So you got a lot of different options right now as far as tennis shoes are concerned, and it makes and it makes things a little more competitive, right? Air Max is popular too. Air Max too, right? Right. So we could, hey, we could name a thousand different shoes. I see you guys like shoes, okay? All right, let's 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 continue. Government regulations. Government regulations don't really play too much into uh, the fact of how shoes are priced right now. So uh, I'm not going to use that example right now. Channel members, this means your other P's. Uh, how do they play into that? Uh, let me ask you this. Um, do you think it costs the same to ship a shoe from Fayetteville to Roseboro as it does from China to Roseboro? No. no. No, okay. Anybody have any idea what the majority of Nike shoes are made? In China. Uh, China. In China and Vietnam. Okay. Do you think Nike factors in the cost into the cost of that shoe? Yeah. Do you? Yes or no? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Other things to take into consideration are the company objectives and strategies as well. Your company objectives and strategies, that can mean your profit maximization, that can mean being the number one selling the shoe in the market, it can mean a variety of different things, okay? Let's continue. Other things that pricing does, it attracts the customer's attention. Why do you think, uh, did any, any of your parents go to the dollar store? Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, any of them? Yeah. That's my favorite, Dollar Tree is my favorite store. Because I know when I go in there, I ain't got, it. it's either a dollar or no less than a dollar, no sell, right? Do you think people go there because it's the Dollar Tree? Yo. Yes. 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 Do you think people go to Walmart because Walmart advertises sales? No. Why do they go there? <laughs> to get stuff. To get stuff, right? But what if they had the same stuff but it was expensive? Would they go? No. How many of you guys go to Kroger to buy groceries? I already know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you guys go to Publix to buy groceries? Harris Teeter. Whole Foods. Don't we don't even know what these are, right? Because we're going to we're going to Walmart, IGA, and Food Line. How many of your mamas, when they get up to that line and Food Line, have to pull out their MVP card to make sure they're getting that discount? Oh yeah, absolutely. So those prices. <laughs> but anyway, and, 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 and whether it's paid for with EBT or not, she still wants the discount, right? All right, all right. So here's the things that again take into account with your pricing. What does value mean? Somebody tell me something they value. Value your car. Value your car. What else? Phone. Your phone. What else? Shoes. Shoes. Okay. So that means that other than your family, which I know if, if, if something bad were to happen and somebody broke into your house, the first thing you're gonna do is save your family, right? Yeah. But after that, what you get? You get your shoes. You get your phone. Right? Why do you value it? Because it costs a lot. It's something that it's worth to me. All right, let, let, let's, let's get one person at a time. We'll get too many responses. Raise your hand. Let me. All right, James. Because it costs a lot of money. Anybody else? It's all about the money? No. I value my phone because I'm owning it a lot. It has a lot of my contact information in it. I use it to work. I use it to play games. It's my primary source of entertainment. How many of you guys would say the Xbox? My son right now has the fastest thumbs in the school nope. when it comes to that Fortnite, right? How many of you play video games? 24-7, right? So that may be something that you value. Again, there are several different reasons why you may value something. It may be because of the feeling that you get when you're using it. It may be because uh, it may have sentimental value. Does anybody have anything that a grandparent or a parent has given, has given them? Okay, is that something you value? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so those things are taken into consideration when we talk about value. And value also affects price. Okay, these are some terms and I have uh, some worksheets that I'm gonna provide for you guys uh, after we finish this discussion. But the worksheets are gonna help to further explain some new terms that I want you guys to, to keep in mind. First term is price fixing. This is whenever two or more companies work together in order to make sure prices are fixed at a certain price, okay? 
Next is predatory pricing. This is selling the product at a very low price with the intention of driving your competition out of the market. So that's if, like if Coca-Cola was to come out and said, from now on we're selling all Coca-Colas for 25 cents. Do you think people would stop drinking Pepsi? Yes. 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 How many of you have parents who have to drink Pepsi? That's the only brand they buy. My grandma. Okay. Yeah, what about how them. many of you have parents who have to drink Coke? That's all they buy. How many of you have parents who buy whatever's on sale at the time? Yeah, Coke. Right. Whatever's on sale at the time is what's in my house. I don't care if it's Pepsi products or Coke products. And that's how it is with the majority of products that are very similar, okay? So, uh, so predatory pricing uh, the, uh, is an illegal practice that would prevent that from happening, okay? Last thing is price discrimination. Charging different prices to similar customers in similar situations to create unfair competition, okay? So this would be, what if uh, the gas stations in Roseboro got together and said, I know gas is 40 cent cheaper in Clinton, but as long as all of us charge this price, we'll be fine. Does that sound familiar? Who drives in here? Who's ever had to pay for gas? Is the gas cheaper in Clinton? Yes. It's a lot cheaper in Clinton, okay? So, so really, really if someone was to complain, I'd have to ask the question, why does the Speedway in Roseboro charge 40 cents more per gallon than the Speedway in Clinton, which is 10 miles away? Does that seem right? What Speedway is it? Uh, I think there's a Speedway over off of um, Southeast Boulevard. Okay? So that's something that I would have to take into consideration, okay? All right. So this pretty much concludes our discussion on pricing. On um, tomorrow, guys, I'm going to show you the video on Nike swoosh. In that video, again, we're going to take a look at the Nike Empire. We're going to take a look at Phil Knight, who is the owner of Nike. We're going to take a look at some of the pricing practices that Nike has. You guys are going to find out how much it actually costs to make that Nike Jordan that you guys are paying $190 to $220 for. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? All right. Thank you very much.